Welcome back to Nikki's Scrapbooking Adventures. Today on Calling Creatives, we have Melanie and Tanya. Tanya is a special guest. So Melanie, why don't you start? Say hi. Hi, everyone. I'm glad it's that time of the month again where we get to have another conversation. This one's going to be exciting, I think. Yes, I'm excited for the guest. Tanya, how, how about you introduce yourself? Are you from hi. YouTube? Good morning. I don't actually have a YouTube channel. I never have figured out the equipment and how I would set the equipment up in my apartment. I got a small space. I'm in a wheelchair. I don't know if I could figure out how to manage it all. And I don't always like the way I look on camera, to be honest. So it's a little bit of all those things. And it's I think it's probably the wheelchair, the conversation Melanie I had about being in the wheelchair that kind of brought up me to an interest in talking about this particular subject. Of you, you're you going to bring a different dynamic to it as someone who is, you know, in a wheelchair and how does that impact you? I'm sure it does impact you because I know some of the items on my list, I think, would be amplified by having some mobility issues. And it's not just for people that are in wheelchairs, but also just people that have general mobility issues. But we're already jumping into the conversation. You are in Canada. Yes, I'm in Canada. I'm on Vancouver Island in a mid-sized, I was going to say small, but it's not small anymore, community called named Nanaimo, home of the Nanaimo Bar. Really actually a great location. I could drive down to Van to Victoria and get to see take the ferry over to Seattle fairly quickly, or I could just take the ferry from and then I to Vancouver and then down to Seattle in like three hours. And yeah, anyway, I love it. It's a great <laughs> place to be. There's still a scrapbook store uh, in the Seattle area in Edmonds that I really like. And there's a couple in my area. You're one of the lucky ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. We'll get to that. Yep. So today we are talking about organizational challenges what we find is difficult, what kind of challenges we're facing currently as we're reorganizing our craft room, that kind of thing. So Melanie, you mentioned some topics. What's your first topic that you've got for us? Oh boy. So my my biggest challenge right now is space. I don't have enough space for all of the stuff that I have. And I am very blessed and very fortunate that I do have a dedicated room. So for those of you out there that don't have that, I'm sure you feel this even more so than me, right? Like, how do you manage all the stuff in a limited space? Yes. One of the things that they talk about on organization videos is have a container. Once that container is full, you can't buy anymore. Well, that's the hard part, right? Like the container is full. I'm going to buy a new container to fill it too. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my particular challenge is the same in the sense that I'm in a one bedroom apartment. I've got my one bedroom here. I wonder if I can angle this a bit. Can you see over there? There's my calyx. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the problem is the top two cubes, I essentially can't use for anything that I want day to day. Right. You know, eventually I'm hoping that those two cubes will be for knickknacks. Okay. Yeah. And that's uh, mostly because they're too high, I would guess. I can't reach them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm limited by how high I can reach because that is in a lot of ways the best way for me to go. I am limited by the amount of space that I have. Those are probably the two biggest things is just the amount of space. Like, I mean, I don't want it to completely take over my apartment. And I'm here. One of the things they say to you about getting organized is take everything out at once how are you going to do that in a small space? Like, where and, are you going to put it <laughs> in the meantime, where are you right? Put it? Like, I've got patterned paper on the on the end of my bed here because I'm trying to get it reorganized and, like, put it in the categories in the way that I want it. And I can't take four cubes of paper out and put it on my bed. And then, I mean, I won't get through it in, one, in the one day. And I need to mm -hmm. sleep. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what am I going to do? Stay up, all, stay up for... 48 hours and just do it all in one <laughs> fell swoop? No, not going to happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you then, definitely have to adapt what the gurus say is the best approach to make it work. Yeah. And I, I think that goes with everything when it comes to organization is you really need to know what will and will not work for you and take what does work and leave what doesn't. And I tried that approach where I took all the paper out and I was trying to get through it. And then what ended up happening is I have a wonderful cousin who comes and helps me twice a month, 
every two weeks with the deep cleaning stuff, washing the floor, uh, you know, yeah. the things that I can't do. And she's like, cousin, we got to put this away. Yeah. And they were in bags still, but they weren't in the, they were just in random bag, like random 12 by 12 Ziploc bags. Right. And so I have a plan that I'm going to sort my paper pretty much the same way as you, but with a slight difference, which we'll talk, I can mention in a minute. And she wasn't aware of that. So she just put the paper in in bags. And yeah. so I'm going later to look in the bags and realizing, oh, you've got stripes in with hearts. No, the hearts don't go in, in with the stripes <laughs> because that's what I'm doing is I've got my rainbow order, the solid E types. Uh, and then I've got my, I want my stripes and my flowers, my page kits, uh, my, yeah. my, my kit starters. But I'm sort of, because of the way I scrapbook and the, and the people I scrapbook yeah. for, I've sort of got my, even my kit starters and kind of sub. Yeah. So it sounds like you've given some thought to what will and will not work, like how your process works and, and yeah. are trying to organize according to that. It's just the limitation of space and then the volume of probably stuff that you have to go through that it's not easy to do in one setting. So yeah. that's yeah. basically it. Yeah. yeah. So Nikki, you're going to be in the middle of moving your craft space. Are you going to a larger or smaller space? I can't remember. I'm going to a smaller space and I'm very mm -hmm. nervous about it. <laughs> the space is definitely going to be an issue. I'm hoping that I'll have enough storage bookcases that it'll be fine. But at the same time, I've got a decent sized bedroom that's covered on three walls and I'm going to have a like half that size. Right. So we'll see how that goes. I do plan on reducing because I just have to there's no way around it but I haven't <laughs> I got the electrical done I still need a drywall and purchase the bookcases and put them together like it's a process right <laughs> and so before we even started this video I've been neglecting my current space I had to like clean up on the floor it was a struggle <laughs> so I think my current struggle is putting crap away <laughs> yeah and I think putting stuff away and I, I struggle with this as well is it comes down to the saying that every everything needs a home, right? Yeah. And when you're at capacity or you don't have the space, even if you quote unquote have a designated space for it, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit, right? And I think this goes back to your point, Nikki, about the people that say, if you've got a bin, that's your allotted space. If that's full, you know, you can't buy any more. You need to get rid of something. So I guess the next question is, how do you decide when to purge and how to purge necessity mm -hmm. <laughs> is usually a main reason right you have no choice <laughs> right but what that's definitely the main reason is necessity for me it's both it's two things yes it is necessity like right now it is necessity what happened for me was my cousin not the one who cleans for me her mom her mom and I are the same age. She said to me, cousin, why don't we get you some of those Ikea cubes? Well, one set of Ikea cubes became two set of Ikea cubes, which became now three set of Ikea cubes. There's one set there. There's that's two by four. And there's the three by four in my living, in my living area and a small little thing under my television. Now the one under my television is not really scrapbook related. It's for right. stuff like DVDs, right. you know, but the two, the one in the bedroom and the one in the living room are both craft related. And it really was, I want, I had the thing, so I needed to start using it, like figuring out how I wanted to use it. And I think the big mistake I made there is I didn't map it out. Okay. Like, like Todd, going back to the previous question, but and tying it into this is what you said about a space for everything. I should have counted how many cubes I had to start with. And made my categories and said, okay, this much space for paper, this much space for embellishments, this much space for stamp and stuff. Right. And I think I would have been done by now. Okay. So mm -hmm. lack of planning in your case. Yeah. Has been a and hindrance. That, yeah. And actually that's another unique thing for a person with a disability like mine. I It looks when you look at me, like I, it's, my legs don't work and that's it. But because of, without getting into the complexities of spina bifida, I've got a bit of executive function difficulty. So what I really needed to do was sit down with an organizer. Like I need help with like keeping organized and being organized and 
how to, what are the, like, right. I, I might know all the steps, but the correct order, I, I mess it up. So yeah. what I really needed to do to start with is to know my weaknesses and say, you need somebody to map this out with you. And, and I think that that can go with a lot of people, not, not for just sure. people with disabilities, sure. where sometimes the thought of it is just overwhelming. Like, yeah. where where do you even start? So Nikki, seeing as you're almost starting like with a fresh slate, how, how are you approaching this? I'm definitely taking it as what the space is available, right? So I want to use what I have. And so I'm going to use about half the furniture that I have, but like I've got a big metal shelf over here. That's not going to work in my new space. I'm gonna, I need new bookshelves. And so it's really trying to figure out where I want things. Can I walk between bookshelves if I have my desk in a certain spot? That kind of thing. But I'm a very visual person. So I'm not going to decide where things go until I have the bookshelves up. Because I need to be able to see actually how much space is in that bookshelf. Yeah, I know it's yeah. 15 inches deep. Great, I can fit paper in it. But what else do I need to be able to fit in those shelves? Right. And I'm also thinking like, I like to stand at my desk, which is not normal. So I have to get a standing height desk, which is a little bit more expensive. I also have to think, okay, I can get under my desk and there's storage under there, but that's not very convenient. What kinds right. of things do I want desk level versus what kind of things underneath the desk? That kind of thing. Right. Lots of decisions. So you didn't actually like sit down and map it all out or anything yet. You kind of just visually have it in your head as to kind of how everything's going to fit sort of until you can actually get in and doing it. And then you're going to adjust accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll probably end up, you know, doing something like Tanya said, like this shelf on the very bottom is going to be tools because one, it's heavy. Two, I don't use it very often and it'll go under my desk. So it's a little bit harder to get to. Right. Right. So I know where that's where my cinch is going to go. That's where some heavier tools are going to go. They're going to go on the bottom. Right. But then from there, I need to figure out, okay, where am I going to go? Do I reach them enough? Where's my printer going to go? Those kinds right. of things. So. It'll be this, interesting how that all Yeah, there's this out. concept of developing zones in organization, right? And and zone zero is kind of like your immediate, like immediate surface. And then as you move out, you know, it becomes where you put your less and less important stuff or stuff that you don't access on a regular basis. And I found it quite interesting. I did this a couple of years ago in my space where I kind of mapped out what I would be considering my, my different zones. And it is real. it's really interesting because it's going to be different for everybody. Like for instance, Tanya, you would probably have a lot of zones where things are too low or things are too high. So you're really yeah. looking at an, an, a very different kind of level than for instance, me who says I need to do as much vertical storage as I possibly can to maximize everything, right? But for you, yeah. though, that would end up all being zone four, let's say, which is really not accessible. But I have to be more careful in what I put in the bottom in the bottom layer of my cal levels of my calyx. It has to be stuff that has a handle or, or that easy to get out. Right. You know that, and that's not heavy. I bet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The other thing I would notice is I have to you have to think about things like I have a I bought from Michaels one of those twelve by twelve acrylic drawers there's three the three and i've got it and it fits perfectly in the cube but i can't because it fits so tight in the cube it's really not workable so i'm going to take it out and i'm going to move it to my desk but now i can't use it for cardstock which is what <laughs> i was originally using it for because yeah. as we were saying yeah. in the video I, we're, i've got a i'm right at a window by my desk and i don't want my cardstock in a clear acrylic container right. where, the, where the sun's going to hit it yeah. So I now got to figure out what I'm going to do with my cardstock. I'm going to integrate it into my rainbow right. with my my heavy pattern paper. But when to purge for me all goes by scrap, but by garage sale season. Okay. I, so you have you have a regular system of purging then. Yeah. Every year in in the spring, got to get ready for the, the garage sale that happens in July. I think it is or late June. Now she's moved. anyway. But yeah, it's. Somewhere she either does it early summer or late summer, uh, and she's a friend of mine, so I can say to her, "What are we thinking for garage sale this year? What are you aiming for right. date wise?" And I put that in my calendar, and I work backwards, and I figure out a time where I want it, 
where I want right. to start when it needs to be finished and so that I can get it priced and ready for the garage sale. So you work towards that. Now, Nikki, you, you've had some recent success with garage sales. Are you going to do that on a more regular basis going forward? I've been doing it for the past three years. This year is definitely the most successful, probably the most that I've purged too. And so as I move forward with moving my craft room, I'll probably end up listing some of my stuff on local Facebook groups that are very active in purchasing. Okay. From other people. Yeah, we have that here too. Yeah. And you guys all know that I don't sell anything because I'm too lazy. <laughs> what do you do with it when you purge it? How do you, like, if that, if I didn't have a sale, you know what I would do? I would say I'm purging it. I would put it in the purge box and the purge box would sit in the corner of my apartment for a year. Yeah. So because I do have the YouTube channel, I've been doing giveaways and, oh, okay. and that's been very successful. I guess like most people are not opposed to receiving a free box of, of goodies, but I've had no problem giving it away basically. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I've been very blessed with what I have. And so I don't mind passing um, these supplies on to someone else who's going, going to be able to use them. Now I've been purging all year. I think it's been all year, if not longer. And so oh, I'm, yeah. I'm getting quite the stack. I think I'm up to seven or eight you large boxes full of stuff so the, oh wow the massive giveaway is coming you guys <laughs> i just have a few more things to go through um awesome. and, and then we'll, maybe it'll be just in time for christmas yeah awesome. you better get it before the prices increase on shipping girl <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly okay so we talked about space a little bit which i think everybody can kind of agree is a general kind of issue. So what's another one of your challenges? Well, we kind of touched on this too, is the just the amount of stuff, but space, amount of stuff. That's, I feel like when people are watching organization videos and room tours, they want to see how people are putting their stuff away. And right. sometimes it doesn't always work. We talked about this last time where you feel like you have to buy all these organization systems because you think they're going to work, yeah. but then you get here and they yeah. don't necessarily work. And yeah. so trying to find the right system for you is another challenge I think that we all have. Yeah. So there's a couple of things there. There's the search for the elusive, perfect scrapbooking container, right? Storage mm -hmm. container, which is going to differ for everyone. And then there's the idea FOMO, I guess, or the desire to have a Pinterest, Instagram worthy craft room. So, and I don't think any of us are really aiming for that. I don't, I don't get that impression anyways. No, I, it doesn't need to be Pinterest worthy. It needs to be functional. I'd like it to not be completely ugly. I'd like to be able to, I, I really, I don't know if you guys have talked about the cast from Clutterbug. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That one's really helped me. You know, I, I really, that was actually the thing that got me on the right track in terms of figuring out who I am and how I, you know, how you think I, organizationally, right? Like how, yeah, exactly. how you like to store and maintain your supply. Yeah. yeah. That, that I'll be works. honest with you. You know what, what my biggest org challenge is, is, is too much stuff, but it's not just too much stuff. It's as we watch the industry change and it gets harder to find stores. Yeah. I just want to buy it all because I get this idea in my head that in, it's going to go away. It's going to go away. Yeah, someday. In a year, we're not going to have an industry, yeah. which is, you know, I like when I, what happened with close to my heart that blew me away. Yeah. And I was like, well, if we can lose close to my heart, we could lose anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we, we just lost impression obsession is, is a, is a stamp company in the last number of years. We lost basically, I mean, it's been a while now, but basic grace, scenic route, any number of yeah. companies, my paper companies that I that I love. I look through as I'm sorting. Pink Fresh isn't doing paper anymore right now, and who yeah. knows if they're going to come mm -hmm. back. And I yeah. love Pink Fresh paper, you know. And so you see it, and you buy it, and you take it home and realize I already have this collection back. So that's that would be another organization challenge, right? Like keeping track of what you have versus not have, you know. So you avoid double purchasing. Now I know for things like stamps and dyes, I maintain an inventory like on a on a database kind of thing. But for paper collections, I don't bother. Do you guys do any sort of tracking or inventory system for your crafting supplies? Nope, I not used, at all. <laughs> I used to have a spreadsheet 
just a boring old Excel spreadsheet for yep. a stamp. I found that didn't work particularly well. I never, it wasn't particularly easy to update it. I know that Tim Holtz has an app for, for his stuff, which I'm considering I might use. I need to find one that I like for, that. that's really easy to like, take a picture of a QR code and put it in and then it's there. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Because if I don't have that, I, it'll, you know, and I need an, and I need an easy way to take it, to remove it, you know? Right. Right. When I, when yeah. I purge it. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. If you go down that route of, of maintaining an inventory system of, of your crafting tools, I have to admit, I've gone through a couple of different iterations and I have to admit it does take time. And sometimes I resent it. Like, I'm like, why am I doing this? Right. So but then there's other times, for instance, the way I have my stamps categorized, I've got the like all keywords attached to them. So if I'm looking for a very specific type of stamp, I can put that in there and I can find it really easily. Yeah. So there are benefits, but there is a cost that's not going to be for everybody, for sure not. There's also a cost to buying the same Tim Holt Santa dye <laughs> twice. And yeah. the same stamp it up, yeah. the same stamp it up stamp set twice. So yeah. when I weigh it like that, spending a hundred bucks a year, whatever for color my world or, or one of the, or Evernote or yeah, is worth it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just even, I'm going to tell you right now, even if you do manage it, if you don't remember to go and check it before you hit the buy button, it's not going to help any. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The nice thing is I don't really do a lot of online shopping. Okay. Yeah. And when, although, you know, ironically i should in some ways i, I would be better off doing more on sh online shopping because the one scrapbook store i really like up in courtney which is about an hour and a bit away from me you shop online and if you put it in your cart and you bought it before it will tell you okay you hmm. already purchased this on that's nice on december 28th yeah 2021 or whatever you know and also, and the stamp store here, that's like literally, it's dangerous. It's like five minutes from my from my home. She also has it in her system, like she's got a forty nine er market sale going on right now. Uh, she's clearing out small forty nine er market. So I there was this one rub on set that I'm like, I might have bought this, but I'm not sure. So she said, let me right. check. And she's yeah. like, no, you don't have this one, but you do have that one. So that's the, that's the joy of shopping at smaller smaller yeah. organized or, or you know because scrapbook.com and stuff for instance they yeah they, they don't do that <laughs> they'd be happy if you bought it twice <laughs> yeah yeah and i don't even bother shopping at michael's anymore so that's you know one of the things about having a large amount of stash is i'm finally at the point where i'm getting a lot pickier okay yeah so that's one way to keep the stash in jack yeah now you you've done that as well, right, Mickey? You you've started to become more discriminating in what you're buying. Yeah. So I think the most recent collection that I bought was the Remember by Simple Stories, and that was for a specific project. And I'm on a design team where I can purchase supplies from the store. Well, I'm finding that I'm purchasing things like foiled card stock. Things yeah. that I don't have compared to a collection. So do you even go and look or are you more, I've got this project, so I'm going to go look for something specific. Or do you just kind of like, oh, let's just see what Simple Stories is offering this, you know, with their new release. The requirement is there has to be 10 of an item in order for me to be able to use it in a project. Right. So right. I have to kind of go in and plan, okay, what collections do they have so far that are 10 of? Is there something that's kind of sparking my interest? Right. Uh, and how can I use that in a project? What okay. technique can I share that's kind of new, kind of not, because no technique is new, right? But I have to do a technique video and then a project video. So you're you're just trying to use maximize your stash basically. So but on a general mm -hmm. course outside of your design team kind of work, you're not actively shopping. Nope. I've been obsessed with Vicky Boot and I've got her most recent collection. So it's not necessary. <laughs> well and I can also see that and you know this this move that you're doing could also kind of put a damper on purchasing things, knowing that it's just one more thing that you have to deal with and transfer and move. So I could see that that would play a role. Yeah, I'm going to, it's not a close to my heart because they closed, right? It's a creative memories crop and they offer the ability to be able to pre-purchase 
and I'm like, I don't even, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want yeah. to, I don't want to bring it in my space. I don't want to have to find space for it. Most of the time, they're not really my style. A couple of times I've bought stuff from them, but I just don't want to bring more back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad place to be, but I think it's very indicative of, of a lot of us where we're at, which is also to Tanya's point about how many of the companies are struggling and it's being reflected in those kind of closures. And uh, I mean, it's sad, but it's also a reality of overbuying for so many years. And to be fair, like I'm going to maybe stray a little bit here, but I don't, I think the industry has, is struggling with trying to figure out, I've always said there's sort of three categories of people. There's the people who want it and they want it now and they want it all. There's the people like me who really love products and pretty products, but I can wait, you know, I want it out there long enough that I can wait for it. And then there's the people who really don't know the name brands, don't care about the, the, the companies. They're doing a specific project and they want very thematic paper to make this thing, this baby album kind of thing. And they're going to do one project and they're probably going to not come back to it. And the industry, I think, struggles with it. If it's in any, for any industry to survive, you have to find ways to bring new people in because eventually mm -hmm. the people who've been at it a long time, whatever the hobby is, whether it's scrapbooking, stamping or quilting or whatever, you reach a point of over of overload where it all starts to look the same. I have been a Stampin' Up! shopper for a very long time. It's, I'm looking at the new holiday catalog and where it was very much, oh, I must have this and this and this and this. It's like, I like that. I'd be happy to get it, but I'm going to wait and see if it goes on sale but when they're retiring some of the stuff, you know, because I don't need it because we all have. So if we've been doing this hobby a very long time, we all have a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you're, and you're right. A lot of it starts to feel like it's the same thing. So I think yeah. they're probably struggling with new and innovative like ways to interpret the supplies yeah. that are out there. Now, yeah. speaking of changing what they offer, basically new supplies, what frustrates me is when they change the packaging size of things. That is one of my challenges. Specifically, I'm thinking of stamp sets. They used to come in a very standard size and now they're all doing these like six by eight or larger stamp sets. And I'm like, my system barely accommodates that. You know what I mean? Like I had to make modifications. I wish I wish there was some sort of standardization where everything was the same size. I know it's not realistic, but that's my wish. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree with you. I am I struggle with that. I'm struggling with that too. It's really hard. That's like, I, I know I've said to a friend that I'm struggling to find packaging for my die cut pack or, or storage for my die cut packs that is like the right width and you know yeah. but stamps are worse stamps yeah. are a lot harder to figure out in terms of mm -hmm. you know they're they're all different sizes and i really like the avery l pockets yeah but then it's like finding the right i've got, so I've got all these stamps in pockets in a random basket right now while I figure out a proper way to stand them up so I can flip through them easily. I, I love that when I'm looking for a stamp, I get to flip through all of them and go, oh, look at that. I forgot about that one. I want to use that, you know? Right, right. What about you, Nikki? Have you had, had any challenges with the sizes of different products? Yes and no. So my solution is to get rid of the original packaging and just force them into the correct size pocket. I will say I'm thinking right now, you know, I've got my categories and I've got these bins that I pull out and I flip through and I really like doing that. But even now I can think of dyes that I've never used. And I'm like, man, maybe I should start, start there in the purging process. But my solution has been to just remove them from the original packaging and put them into the packaging that I have that fits my organization system. Although anything four by six and smaller will fit five by seven right. will even fit. Uh, it's those six by eight and larger that are a struggle for sure. Yeah, yeah. I've done that as well. Cause sometimes you can get smaller stamp sets and I've repackaged them into the same size as my larger stamps, for instance, just to have that uniform consistent look, because if you intermix smaller with the larger, they get, 
stuck down in the bottom and then you don't see them. So there's that. But the larger stamps, because that's my one of my biggest beefs, I know you can cut them, but often you can't cut cut it in a place. Yes. You know, right? <laughs> so it is what it is. It's just a little bit frustrating. I'm like, oh, why couldn't you yeah. stay? And I get yeah. it. They're trying to offer something different. And, and that gives them the ability to offer maybe larger images than they would on a smaller, smaller platform. But it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, man, I'm inconsistent. <laughs> if, if you're organizing by category, that is it, it really is a struggle. Like for me, because I have been, like I say, using the Avriel pockets and they're three different sizes. And I have some dies that I, because I was out of small ones, I put them in a medium and the medium is too big. And that bugs me because <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting space. Yeah. But I also don't, because I'm doing it by theme or by category, I want them to make sense. Whatever's in the right. pocket, it needs to logically make sense that they're there together. Right. Because I, you know, I was going to use the example of a stamp set uh, of a die set that went went, went with this go with the stamps. But if if the stamps and dies go together, then they'll be in the same pocket. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So my my next question for the two of you: Do you ever have backup supplies, or are That's you good and you only buy what you need to buy? I have two of my ATG or whatever. I the, the, the I don't have it's not the ATG one. The red uh, right. Spots. Yeah, yeah, I have two of those. Okay. But like you don't um, buy extra glue to have on hand. Oh, or, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. You know, extra, extra glue, foam extra... rolls or re-anchors extra... or... <laughs> yeah. Not re-anchors so much. Not okay. re-anchors so much. I've come to realize that although I am a stamper and a card maker, I'm not as much that as... Okay as yeah, the other that and, was just an example of, yeah. of things that you might have in in kind of back stock inventory um nikki do you do you keep anything so my back stock i guess or my duplicates are all in my travel kit so i have a specific set of supplies that i keep that i can travel with it and go to crops and that kind of thing and that was really out of necessity because i was forgetting supplies at home and realizing oh crap I need to be able to use an ATG and not forget it, right? right <laughs> like, right. so I've got those backup supplies that are like my go-to trimmer, you know, that kind of thing that's really necessary. Outside of that, I have backup glue. I've got a container of glue <laughs> that I probably yeah. should go through and make sure it's not dry. <laughs> and then if I find a piece of paper that I really like, I'll buy two. I will right. admit it. I will buy two. Oh, that's <laughs> nothing. But like, for instance, I, okay, so I'm a sucker for a sale. And yes. I, I mean, it is what it is. So like, if I go on Tate Jungle and they have APG tape on sale, I don't just buy the 10, I buy the case. Like, oh, I, wow. I don't know why I have this in me and I don't know why I'm so excessive. I just am. It is a, It is part of my character, I guess. And so one of my other struggles is, how do I store, like, where do I store that stuff? Because it's not stuff that I won't necessarily need in my craft room at the moment, because I don't need a hundred rolls of ATG tape, but you know, <laughs> I will use it eventually. But yeah, so I, I do struggle with some of that as well. Like, what do I do with some of the stuff that I buy in excess that I know I will use? So that's another one of my challenges. Yeah. I got my friends and I split a case. <laughs> so we each get a box. And then split it. And so it's not as cumbersome as a case. Like, I can't even imagine having that much tape. <laughs> well, it takes up like a whole drawer in one of my things that could be used for something else, right? And yeah, anyways. I, I Unfortunately for me, I have not had any issues with that tape, like being, like going bad. Yes. So, so that's why I do purchase it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for all types of adhesives to kind of mass, you know, buy because sometimes stuff can go off, but that that's not one. But yeah, it just, and then I just sit there and shoot myself like, why did you do this? Right. Well, I know why I did it, but anyways, it is what it is. <laughs> Nikki brought up the topic of having an extra trimmer. That is the one thing I don't have that I regret. Oh, mm. interesting. And I have, I have like five. <laughs> right. I only have one paper trimmer and I think I'm going to break down and get a Fiskars in part because I've got the Stampin' Up trimmer and I really like it. But the only way to get blades for the Stampin' Up trimmer is through Stampin' Up. And 
whereas with the Fiskars trimmer, I can get the blades in a couple different places and yeah. yeah. So I w I need a trimmer like that that it's going to be easy to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. I got adhesive galore. Yeah. I've got like adhesive uh, foam tape, all that stuff. And I just again going back to limiting your space. I have a box for it. Yeah. Like it's a pretty one, one of those pretty boxes from Michaels that I bought for something else, and yeah. I didn't like it for that, and so I just kept it, and that became where I stored my extra adhesive. Right. Right. Do any of you guys have any other challenges that we need to cover? For me, or it's just the basic human stuff like attention span, making time. Yeah. Staying on top of it, having a system, you know. But, yeah. And some people don't like to, to organize, right? I'm yeah. not one of them. I actually enjoy that. Part. I enjoy it too. I enjoy it too. As long as I don't get overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. And about, actually what my cousin has, has said to me is, Cousin, once you figure out what you want, I will help you do it. And once a month, I will help you get it tidied up or every two weeks. You know, yeah. she has the time when she's here, you know, and she ends up doing it anyway. And, and we didn't, she's lovely because she's one of the ones who, she's one of the ones other, like I, you know how your family, they love you and they get concerned about you. And my mother has in the past been known to say, you have too much stuff. You need to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have plenty. I don't have too much stuff. I have unorganized stuff. So it <laughs> looks like a lot more cluttered and worse than it is. So, you know, right. and she's, you know, and she's never once said that, get rid, you need to get rid of half this. Yeah. So okay, I'm just for everybody out there who, who struggles, get yourself an accountability buddy and, or find somebody who you trust, who can do that. For, if, if you need it, get that to keep okay. you on track. That's your tip of the day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Nikki, what's your tip of the day for getting organized, staying organized that you, that you found helpful? Right now, I'm not organized. So, <laughs> and it's debilitating, right? Like if my table is not clear, I don't want a scrapbook. And so it's like finding the motivation to clear my desk, yeah. to clear my floor so I can able to get to my desk. That has been the struggle for me lately, just being able to put stuff away. Right. Yeah. So a couple of things that I've, when I get like that, that have worked for me, I'm not going to say it's going to work for everyone, but you might want to try. One is break it down into very small components, right? Don't say that everything in your space has to be cleared today. Maybe you just say, okay, for today, I'm going to do just this one pile of stuff. And I think it's that getting that ball rolling, right? Like once mm -hmm. you can get a little bit done, and then it becomes easier to do more. Um, another strategy I will use is what I call a 15 minute challenge. I'm just like, okay, I only have to do this for 15 minutes. Here's the timer. I actually put a timer on and I just tackle as much as I can. I almost like compete with myself to see what I can get done in 15 minutes. Or to Tanya's point, a friend of mine and I have phoned each other and said, okay, we're doing a 15 minute challenge. And literally while we're on the phone with each other, we're running around trying to get as much done, stuff done in 15 minutes. That That's helped, but yeah, keep things bite-sized. Know, know what your sticking points are. So it sounds like to me, Nikki, yours is your desk, right? If your desk mm -hmm. isn't clean, it's not gonna happen. So, you know, maybe I need to challenge you to a 15 minute desk cleanup. <laughs> Because mine needs it too. Mine needs it too. The, part, the hard part too is that I just got done with a major project, like a whole album project. And I've got all these little pieces and I'm like, I want to keep them so I can make cards. But do I really want to make cards? Like, ooh. Yeah. And I spent all this money on this. So I'm reluctant yeah. to get rid of it. Maybe I could use it in a page in the future. There's a yeah. whole bunch of leftovers, you know. And so it's just like, maybe I just need to back it up, put it away, and then exactly. think about it later. Let's I was just going to say bag it or bin it, just put it in something, put it away. And then in a month from now, when you're less connected with it, you could probably, mm -hmm. uh, you know, deal with it in a different way if you needed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would just quickly say to add to that, when you go back to it, give yourself in your, before you start looking through it, tell yourself, I'm not going to keep anything that's less than two by six or what, mm -hmm. I don't know, make it up, you know, in terms of scrap <laughs> paper. But yeah, I have, yeah. If it's less than an inch, I'm not keeping it. Oh yeah. I'm pretty good about that. I won't keep oh, the branding yeah. strips anymore. There's no point. Yeah. Like yeah. if I need yeah. a strip of paper, I'm just going to cut 
the quarter inch yeah. that I need. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I think this also goes back to you talked about Cass from Clutterbug. And I really think, I really, really truly believe this is important. You need to know who you are, what you're mm-hmm. going to do with the stuff, how you think about your product, your projects, your process. If you know that, then the rest of it, when you start to get systems in place that connect, it makes it so much easier to maintain. And you, those were our organizational challenges. Make sure to check out Melanie's channel on Wednesday, where we're going to talk about our school prompts from last month and what projects we completed for that. Can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.